That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Jason David Frank. Boom shakalaka. Please do not change channel. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometra. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you do me a favor, go down and hit subscribe. That guy right there is so slow. Okay. He doesn't actually, he moves really slow. Okay. All right. Hit the little bell. Come back over. We got artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, cosplayers, creative minds of all kinds here. We are hanging at Space Coast Comic Con all weekend long. And right now we're hanging with Travis Gibb, the author and creator of Broke Down with Four and Four Dead Bodies. Broke Down and Four Dead That's Bodies. That's correct. It's a muffler. Which is a bad day. It is a bad day. That's a bad day yeah. for folks, man. Don't do that. Don't. don't. Yeah. I have a strong don't break down with Four Dead Bodies policy it's in my a, life. I do, too. I've been <laughs> trying. You know, it's, it's hard sometimes. And you need a certain size trunk for that many dead bodies. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I broke down with one body. That was manageable. But you know, once you get to four, it's really... But cars today are too compact. Right. You need, like, the 70s caddy. Right, if exactly. you're gonna If you're going to run with four dead bodies. Yeah. All right, dude. So you're sitting around one day, and you're thinking, how can I disappoint my parents now? Right. And uh, I mean, it's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> I run from a, a family of disappointed. My, my dad disappointed his dad, and so, so on forth and so, and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> a, it's a line. You pass it down, pass it on down, baby. Four dead. Where did this come from, man? Um, so there's a book I, you may have read. Have you ever read Stray Bullets? Yeah. Yeah. So Stray Bullets is an amazing uh, comic book. In the end of the first issue, there is a uh, scene where this mentally handicapped kid murders a whole bunch of people. And there's a car broke down on the side of the road with all the dead bodies of all the people he murdered throughout the issue. Mm -hmm. That and just, you just thought, dude, I can do so much with right. that. I, I think that's a great concept to start a story. So I wrote, you know, this mini series uh, and just got funded on Kickstarter. That's awesome. Yeah, man. yeah. We were watching the Kickstarter campaign yeah. go. Uh, excellent first run. I mean, yeah. talk, I mean, I, really. Um, yeah, to get four thousand uh, for somebody who's never heard of with four months of promotion. Yeah. You know, it's it's amazing. It's just, I think it's resonates that there's crime that's necessary. You being a pulp guy yourself, you love to write crime novels yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. There's a there's a desire for it in the comic industry. There is. You know, you just need to put it out there and make it interesting. Yeah. And I mean, I think, because those are the stories, I mean, they really, um, as a writer, you get to deal, when you write a, a kind of a pulp story, right. you get to deal with not just your two-dimensional characters. Right. You get to deal with heroes and villains, and you get to dive inside why. Right. And, you know, because I think, you know, and, and the artist in you says, you know what, we're all a little bit of villain, we're all a little bit of hero. Sure. And when you get to dive into those people, and uh, I always tell people, you know, it's, it's uh, whether you like it or you hate it, the bottom line is we had to tell the first three Star Wars stories because you had to see Darth Vader wasn't a two-dimensional right. bad guy. Sure. You know, whether you love the way it was made or you don't, we had to have the story. Yeah. We had to know how this guy becomes the big bad in the in the world. I I agree. Yeah, and there's a there's a, a void for that, right? So let's look at movies. When you know, you go to the 2000s. You know, you had Quentin Tarantino, Rod Rodriguez doing these crime stories, massive crime stories. Even you know, massively three-dimensional characters. Yeah, too. these it, they're having conversations about cheeseburgers, then killing someone. Yeah, you know, they're they're deep. You know, people one were would. doing stuff. As one, <laughs> you got to have a full belly. Right, you can't just kill people on an empty stomach. No, you can't. Yeah. Right, and you need to know. I didn't know that Royal with cheese was a thing. That's you true. Know, until yeah. that day. <laughs> not, <laughs> it's not wrong. Um, okay, so you know, uh, you you've got a long history of working in creativity anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. You actually went to school for film. I did. I did. Yeah. Go to school for film. So, um, it, but you took the time off in the middle. Doing yeah, other yeah. Projects, when, and when now you have you're a kid, back to the yeah, when you have a baby. You gotta um, pay those bills and stuff. Right, and then there's a Power child, company, and you want to raise them right, so I don't become like my. See, my daughter has not decided to abandon me yet, so we're good. See, you're good so far, right? <laughs> right. You know, it's one day she's gonna come home and she's gonna, Dad, I'm an artist, and you're gonna, Oh man. Right, right, right. I'm sure I'm letting her down on some level. On some level, but, but she hasn't let me down yet, and that's awesome. important. Part. That is the important part, right there. But yeah, um, I took a break. I took a break. Um, now we and, met. You were doing web design and, and web work. Yeah, I do web design, right. and I still do. I own a web mm -hmm. design company, a web marketing company, but. Um, I, I got married, uh, and my wife, I was showing her, hey, here's all the things I used to do. And she's like, 
why did you used to do those and not now? And I showed her a full book. Broke Down Four Dead Bodies was done in a folder. And she's like, why is this not out? And I really had no reason why it was not out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Right. We say that a lot at home. I don't know. Well, and it's... it's why didn't the dishes get done? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I did it. I, I called the artist and goes, hey, you want to finish this book? And he's like, yeah, I want to finish this book. I'm waiting for 10 years. Why haven't you called me? I was like, I don't know. So we did. And we came it out. And we put it on Kickstarter. And I brought all my old friends back. Because, you know, doing Kickstarter is easy. I mean, I know, like, people fail on Kickstarter. So I apologize if you failed and you thought it was easy. It's, it's easier than the way it used to be. The way it used to be, you just come up with thousands of dollars, pay someone, and then pay more thousands of dollars to go to cons. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Now it, at least it, someone will invest. It, well, it is. It's, <laughs> you know, we talk a lot to, to the creative artists that come on the show about the shift in arts and entertainment right. thanks to the internet. Yeah. What has happened to arts and entertainment. You can, be a, you can publish books as an author. You can work on comics. You can yeah. get investors through Kickstarter, GoFundMe, yeah. you know, these sites. You do you filmmaking is, you know, you have access to the tools that you need. Yeah. Um, you still have to learn your craft. Sure, absolutely. But beyond that, there's no limit to what you can accomplish yeah. if you'll go out there and do it. But you have to do the hard work, too. It's yeah. hard work on Kickstarter trying to get people to invest in your in your baby. In your dream, yeah. That's right. Yeah, And, you, and you've got to build a relationship with people. Mm -hmm. It's got to be more than a book. Yeah. I'm not going to make $4,000 by selling a $4 book. Yeah. I'm just not. So it's about the relationship. It's about going, do you want to invest in me? This story is worth telling. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Put those things together and show them that this story is worth investing. Now, uh, next time we see you, we'll be up at, the, at uh, Tampa. We'll be in Tampa, yeah. And I'll have a copy. And you'll have books. I'll have co copies. I'll yeah, have that, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, man. we'll have a Nora. So we won't have the actual book yet, but we ordered a Nora edition, which is a black and white version yeah. of it. Um, Carl Malone, who's one of the guys who did the cover, he did Buffy and Frey. He's going to be there. Awesome. Um, and he's going to be signing some. So I'll be doing uh, a whole bunch of stuff out in Tampa. That is fantastic, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. That is fantastic. So we'll be seeing you on the con circuit this coming year. Yeah. A lot more. I know you've always been into this stuff. You yeah. come up here just as a guest and hang out. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm very now you now, now you get to sit behind a table and actually get your work out there. Yeah. And that'll be a lot a lot of fun. Um, so you're writing the story and, you know, creativity comes in waves. Sometimes it's like, hey, here's my story. Best moment for you. When's the moment when you're writing the story and you're like, man, I'm, I've got this. This is this is. My when thing. I when I realized it wasn't a clone of Pulp Fiction, I know that sounds weird, but a lot of people see it. There's a black and white hair, uh, a black guy and a white guy, breaking down. They kind of look like it. Uh, you know, Randy has long hair, but it's blonde. There's a black guy. When I it became more than just uh, a Pulp Fiction ripoff, uh -huh. right? And it took time. Like that's where you know you got to create your craft. Yeah, you you got to write stuff. Ideas. You got to get out. Yeah. And it's inspired by something. It's always going to be inspired by something. It's going. No, this is different. This is unique. And building the universe. So now I have a universe. So Burke Down and Four Dead Bodies, this is a three issue minis. And then I have three one shots that I've created with other creators. Awesome. So there's going to be a wrestling one uh, called Broke Down, uh, Broke Down and Tapped Out. Nice. Um, and there's all these other things that we're going to create and build. So I'm building a universe that other people can be part so of. So when you felt that click over from being inspired by the things you love right. into being inspiring it's yours yeah I, exactly this is your baby right yeah and that that's a great moment yeah. it is when it's you're amazing. writing something and I, you know like as you said i write crime, crime noir yeah much of it is inspired by you know raymond chandler and, and sure. the old you know uh, crime noir novels but when you get to a point and you say okay this is this is something they haven't done right this is mine yeah and and you own it it's it, really honestly it's like one of those the choirs are singing in your head because this is my moment and it's taking it back, right? It's, it's reclaiming it because, yeah. especially when you talk about crime fiction, it always goes to the realm of supernatural these days because mm -hmm. people just, we got to add more things. We got to add more things to make it interesting. It doesn't need to be that in, in making sure you don't go to that bar, right? Yeah. Go to that thing, go to that cheap out, you know, create that story that needs to be told. And crime is interesting enough. It really, really is. Oh, yeah, without it. And here's <laughs> the thing like you said, today's trend is always to go toward, okay, I've got a great story. But I just need the oomph of that a supernatural extra, element yeah. or whatever. <laughs> and you think, you know what? If you've, if you've got a great story right. and you can feel that, comp then you don't need that extra oomph. Yeah. You, you can go right up to it and just stop there yeah. because people are interesting. Yeah. Bad guys, good guys, their interactions. I mean, this is, 
Well, and spend that time on your dialogue, right? Spend that extra time that you have, instead of adding that supernatural element, write better dialogue and more witty dialogue. Kevin Smith, uh, Quentin Tarantino, they're known for their dialogue. Yeah, well, and that's the beauty of it is because much of what happens between human beings is in what we say to one another. It is the conversation over the cheeseburger. (laughs) <laughs> it, it, those are the moments. I mean, those are the moments life are made of. You yeah. know, everybody thinks it's those deep, dramatic moments, but it's it's what leads into that. Yeah. It's you know, you weren't you know planning on the big breakup moment. You weren't planning on the big murder moment. Yeah. Those were all things that happened along the way. Yeah. What you were planning on was going to see a movie together. Right. <laughs> you were going to talk about Spider Man for twenty minutes, and then all of a sudden the guy got on your nerves, and bam, he's gone. Right. And that's then there's a moment. You yeah. see a transition there. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I yeah, agree. That, that's a really cool moment. Um, okay, let's see. <laughs> okay, she, she... That's funny. Really? Really? This, this is not a taped confession. Okay. She wants to know, are okay. any moments in your story inspired by real life events or antics? Well... We, this is not a true crime confession. Any, any, what is it? Any similarity to real life in this story is entirely unintended. Right, unintended. <laughs> so, um, it, it's kind of funny because uh, someone asked me a similar question in another interview, and I didn't answer it. I wouldn't either. I did. I'm not did. admitting to but that. But you know what? Because I've known you, Garrett, um, you know, uh, I, I'll go ahead and answer that question. Yeah, so uh, I grew up in New Hampshire, and uh, my, my uncle was a small time kind of gangster. Um, he did football cards. Everyone kind of knows what those are, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the $10 a thing, but it actually got more and he got busted for um, a small little casino that he was running out of the back of a hotel. Um, so yeah, it, it's a, this story isn't inspired by that, but I grew up in drugs and alcohol and, and stuff like that. That's where I grew up. My, my family's drug and alcohol. I'm far away from them, uh, from New England. But so I, I knew how criminals think and, and act, you know, and I knew how cops interact with things because cops would interact with me because of things that my family was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I just recently, uh, a friend of mine uh, who I grew up in high school recently just got shot and shot up by the that. cops. Yeah. yeah, he got shot out by the cops, you know. Um, so yeah, I really know, it, and what's, what's different about it for me is I know these people and I know their hearts and I know what they're doing for their family. Mm-hmm. And I know at some point they clicked. And, you know, for Which me, is going to make your characters more real, more grounded, yeah. and more interesting. Absolutely. Because and they're people. We, we, we love to write a, bad, a big bad. You know, the big bad wolf. He's yeah. just a character. It's a two-dimensional you know, character that just scares you for a one. You can get away with that for a book, maybe. You can get away yeah. with it for one comic. But if you're going to go on, you're going to do a series, and you're going to create a universe. Yeah. Those people have to have real lives. Yeah. Knowing what those people's real lives are like and what motivates them, it's going to make a better story well, in the end. Let's be honest. We're only one or two bad decisions away from being any of those people. We like to pretend we're not, but really, in reality, you're one or two bad decisions, one or two bad paths, one or two bad hangouts mm-hmm. with certain people, and you're going to be down that stuff. There's certain, there's tons of people who are right now going through lawsuits of situations where they did everything right, and they're, but they didn't know who they were dealing with. You and know. you know, so it is. It, it see, <laughs> it's a good answer. Scary, because you never know. You're like, <laughs> you're like, really, four dead bodies, huh? Hmm. Anyway, yeah. Um, so where you're going to head up? You're going to be at Tampa Bay Comic Con. I'll be at Tampa Bay Tem- Comic Con. Excuse me, Tampa Bay Comic Con. Meg- Megacon, yeah. Megacon. And then I'll be in Daytona. Daytona, okay. Uh, for for an indie takeover. Great. Um, we're working on a whole bunch. Of, I've got a whole bunch of one shots and like little anthology stories coming out in the next Fantastic. few weeks. Fantastic. That is, is awesome. Oh, uh, not weeks, but like in the next year or so. So you'll see numbers of that. We have the next number two Kickstarter coming out. You know, probably in March or so. And fulfillment man like the books are coming we've got them we get the money next week and then we order our air fresheners and all our cool supplies to send out to everybody who who backed us awesome that's fantastic it really is we're going to drop links down below so you can find travis gibb online you can go on over check him out on facebook stalk him a little bit he really likes that yeah i've been doing it for years they haven't blocked me yet except for that one time but you know be careful on the internet with pictures that's all i'm saying well, yeah, I mean, I yeah. just already told you I know organized crime, so, yeah. you know. Watch it. You know, anyway, uh, we're going to drop links down below. Check them out. We're going to say thanks to our partners and friends over at Embellish Effects, Pound the Grape, uh, Some Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Famous Bases and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, our great friends here at Space Coast Comic Con, and, of course, to Mr. Travis Gibb for hanging out with us for a little while, sharing Broke Down and Four Dead Bodies, coming to a comic shop near you, coming to a convention near you. Go online. Just buy it online. Buy you don't it. even have to leave the house. Bugged up 4deadbodies.com. You can That's pre-order right. it right now. If, if, if you have four dead bodies in the trunk, don't leave the house. <laughs>
Because, yeah, just stay home. Well, anyway, if they're already in the truck, they've already left the house. That's true. <laughs> Why did you bring them home? What's wrong with you? You can't store those in the garage. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stink up the joint. Right. All right, guys, we're going to let you go. Remember, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. <laughs> Thanks, Travis. No problem. <laughs> Oh, my God.